lesson 36 and I want to I've got a we've got a we're working on the legs okay and so yesterday's leg session got a little bit detailed and I, I want to step back from that level of detail and one of the most important things that we have going on in this class is the movement of all structures from the 2D to the 3D and it's our our skill and being able to have forms successfully become 3D that kind of starts us on a path to draftsmanship. So it's, it's this essential practice. And so we practice cube forms and cylinder forms. cone shapes and spheres ribbons and these shapes these shapes are the primitives. And they become the building blocks of everything else that we draw. So we start taking on something complicated like the leg and uh, even the thigh, which, which can be so nicely simplified, has four main mu muscles that form just the quadriceps, just the, just the muscles on the front, which doesn't include the knee, which doesn't include the side of the leg, which doesn't include the adductors, the muscles on the inside of the leg, and the hamstrings on the back of the leg. So that adds another 14 things. So So how do we... with abbreviated practice, how do we get started in such a way as we don't make our work overly complicated? So let's think of a, let's start out with a basic shape. Here is the pelvis from the front this will be the pelvis from the back and this will be the pelvis from the side. Good thing to know when you're looking at the pelvis from the back, it tilts forward. So when you're looking at it from the front, it tilts forward. In the back, you have the sacrum and the cleft between the gluteus maximus muscles. In the front, the arch of the pubis right here, and you can come down like a triangle. The belly ends in a line like this. So everything up here is abdomen. So we'll have, here's that front part. Here's the side. There's the side. Here's that triangle on the side right there. This turns all into abdomen. This moves down. 
into pubic region. Okay, and now the legs are attached here in a ball and socket joint. And this, there's the ball shape in there and out here, trochanter. And it's right in there. The legs, the thighs, come down at that angle. I know this is feeling like a straight up repeat of yesterday. I promise to not leave it there. Notice this slight curve. So I'm going to take this shape here and draw it in deeper simplification. What we're looking for, we need a center point like this. Now you see how in a really blocky way it starts to give us what would be the shape of the briefs. So we can take that shape. The legs emerge not from the top of the pelvis, but lower, lower down like that. And you can take this shape and you can throw a curve like that. And you can throw a curve like that. Okay? And that gives you a much more comfortable set of briefs. And for this line, the set of briefs runs down and up like that. And so we're just drawing like a set of underwear here. And thinking about the leg coming out like this and down. So this circle here, this we have this ellipse in perspective. That's the point of connection for the legs. What's going to happen in side view and back view is this. Let's look again for the set of briefs. We can start with this triangle, but the triangle is lower, sorry. Start with this triangle, this. And the legs are really attaching, if you could see through this, the legs would be attaching like this. which leaves this as a shelf. So if we think of that in side view, here's the briefs like this, and the leg attaches like this. So you'll see this point here is that. Side view with a leg. Let's Here's the elliptical shape.
Okay. So the first <coughs> level of detail that we're going to impose on the cylinder that's the leg. So we can we can see how to connect it. And the first level of detail that we're going to impose on the cylinder that's the leg is you can see at the top of the cylinder that the cylinder is the top edge of it is not that. So if you're sketching a figure, let's say There's a figure. And we're looking for how do the legs interact with the pelvis. That line will help us understand the volume of the, of the leg. However, that will help us understand the attachment to the pelvis. And a lot of times you'll see in drapery wrinkles that emerge from that exact spot. That's really where the form changes. Okay, so that's our first, that's our first correction on this cylinder. So our cylinder is more like this. The next thing that we want to add to the cylinder is that it's tapered. So up here, the cylinder is bigger, and down here, it's smaller. So we're running into a much smaller space. Uh, I, it's also, so these lines here in the middle, instead of being straight lines like that, here's straight lines, they go like this, they kind of belly out in the middle. So what we have right now gives us a gives us a lot. Let's quickly draw a figure walking. Here's the pelvis. So we know that the connection is like this, and the connection on the other side will be similar. Down here, it's smaller than up there, and this line bellies on both sides. And there's a shelf, here's a line, there's the triangle. The connection is up in there for this one. The line bellies, line bellies, and this is smaller in here than it is up there. And there's the shelf pushing outward. And in a lot of cases, just this amount of info is enough. Being able to being able to do this well, okay? Being able to go back to this shape and establish this line in a clean way and this line in a clean way. 
there, <clears throat> there are two more shape things that are really fun to add if you, if you can comfortably get to here. One of them is right here. And what you can add there is that the shape up top, as you go like this, you come around, here's the shape up top. And it's not just up top, really. It's that, it's that this shape in the front plane is divided in two. And it's divided in two along this line. Like it comes out, there's this diagonal that comes out. I'm sorry, I've done this in the absolute wrong direction. There's a diagonal that comes out here, and it shoots down that way. Okay? And it comes from here, and it shoots this way. And it has a shape. It, it's You notice between here and here, there's a little bit of a butterfly thing going on. Here it is on the side plane. It comes from high and it goes backwards like that. You see this here will be shooting from there and it goes backwards and connects to the back of the knee. So if we sketch a figure, here's a figure sketch. And here's the underwear connection. And we're going to make sure that we're tapering our thighs. And a further level of detail includes from the high, from not the point of the pelvis. The pelvis ends here, okay? Down in. You have a shape like this. One, two. And it's a kind of a fun shape. It's like an H that's been skewed. So this comes right out of here. And the distance between here and here, there's actually, it changes planes. So what happens is, here's that, it comes this way, right? And notice as the, this turns around that way, that's the side of this sphere. And this guy, when it comes around, that's top. And then this guy, you actually see a change in the shape here. And that makes this a kind of side. But that's getting pretty detailed, OK? Now, along the lines of these, another extremely cool shape that happens that we can take advantage of is that there's a rhythm and it kind of goes like this. It's like here's the rib cage and this comes down and when it gets down to here it goes like this. So it shoots down like this and comes around. And this shape on the outside, see how that works? So here's the curve on the inside, like this. And here's the curve on the outside. It shoots into it like that. So you could think here's the, and uh, here it is in the side view. This is the inside curve. It goes like that. So 
So it's almost like this. And we'll get down into the kneecap. Our first simplification for the knee is as a box. And there's a lot of complicated forms in the knee, <clears throat> but for right now, we'll just make it a box. And that means it's more determined <clears throat> by squareness than any other any of the other primitives that we can associate with it. It gives us a point to begin to memorize this shape from. And this rhythm wraps around to the back of that square. That's where it connects. It connects to the back of that square. So it passes from here over the top of the thigh and around to the back. So we can think coming out on the back side, and this is like, here it is. It, it's going to go oh, over, and we can do this S curve here and wrapping around to the back of the knee. Okay, and then here's the square. And if I've got a square shape here on the inside, in here, I wouldn't see it, but it's wrapping around and it's coming up over there, okay? <clears throat> and in side view, Okay. On the side plane, right in here, is that biggest bone, the trochanter. And everything around it kind of leads to it. The muscle, the lower and bigger muscle of the butt actually wraps around the outside of the thigh it comes to about here. It goes like this. That's the muscle of the top of the butt, the gluteus medius. And then there's another muscle here. The leg emerges from there. Okay. You don't have to know that. Here's what you have to know. The leg attachment. the shelf of the butt. And there's another rhythm that I wanted to introduce you to here, which goes like this. You've got this, and there's a muscle underneath that attaches like this and wraps around to the back. There's a tendon that goes like this.
See this guy? And you could almost think of it as attached like that. So here's another rhythm. But this goes against it here. That's the hamstrings. So here, side view. And I want to look for that rhythm. It comes in here. You see this point? You see this arrow pointing inwards? And that picks up and S's around to behind there. It comes in and S's around until it gets to the back of there. And that separates the back side of the leg from the side proper of the leg. Here's the side proper, okay? Side proper, what a word. Um, here's that back plane of the leg. So the leg has So this rhythm will make it so that when we're drawing now, we can take this cylinder and what was before shaped like this, we started with straight lines. Now we've got a bellying line here and a bellying line here, but now we can throw this rhythm in here like this. And now it takes that shape and it adds one more layer of complexity or interest to it, one more layer of beauty. So here, a really quick caricature. This is the inner leg. It's got that going on, where the adductor hits the sartorius. So we can say, as we sketch our guy, connection, connection, top of the pelvis, and that helps the one, two on the inside of the leg. And here's that rhythm, which ends us at the back of the kneecap. I was a little too high there. But notice this double curve on the inside. So the butterfly, we've got a butterfly, and then we've also got a double curve. So we'd say, we could say, here's our shape, and it goes boom, 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 like that. And this is in the front. OK. 
Okay. Now, as we deal with the back of the leg, here's the next thing for us. As you take the form and you turn it around, I wonder if I can go back. So as we're dealing with the back of the leg, right here, here's our connection. Our connection is the other side of this mass, right? And the leg comes out, and you can see the bone here. It comes out and around the bone, and it comes down like this. But now we've understood that there's a double curve on the inside. That's the front, but we can still see it from the back. And there's a single curve out here, and it kind of bows inwards in there. So there's this thing right here. As, as the leg passes down into the, into the kneecap, which we're thinking of as a square for right now, in the back there's this muscle belly right here. Okay, and it's got two teeth on it that connect on either side of the either side of the kneecap, and so the shape of this goes upwards and connects in there, and it comes down, and it connects onto the back of a kneecap like that, and it's got. You see, and, and people with a lot of definition, it's got two heads. In this instance, it's funny, it almost looks like a little guy. So this part here is significant because the bottom part of the leg emerges from there. That's what the bottom part of the leg comes out of. We'll, we'll learn about that a little later. But so we can start to think. Notice what I just did. You see that? Okay. So if I'm drawing the back, someone from the backside, here's the there. Notice how I'm putting this in perspective. There's my connection. Here's the double curve. single curve. And now if I decide, just like what I would decide for this as a corner, this edge of the hamstring is a corner. And there's the corner. If I want to lift this leg up, I place this arch higher. If I want to drop this leg lower, I place it lower. This establishes a corner for me right there between front plane and back plane. And it, it bulges in here. This whole muscle can have a real volume to it when it's on the back plane. 
And it's from this that more material will emerge, okay? It's from this exact hole. And now notice, if I looked at that in side plane, say I take the leg and it connects to the pelvis like that, the gluteus, okay? Here's my connection. Here's the hamstring. It's down here and it bulges like that. And it creates a side plane out of which, like if I do this, so I'm looking at it in perspective, out of this side plane emerges the lower leg. It literally inserts into there. There's the box of the kneecap. And the side plane of it is established partially by the presence of those hamstring muscles that come scooting around so if the bottom part of the leg looks like this, its top border is established for us by the way those hamstring muscles allow it, they, they, sh they, they funnel it into the back of the knee, okay? And that makes for us a side plane. So as the leg comes forward, we could almost think of it as a shape like this. We could take, here we've been thinking of the top kind of bulging like this. The bottom, the hamstring bulges, but then as it comes forward, we could almost do this with it. See what I'm doing down here is I'm making a space where the hamstrings, so here's the hamstrings, and they're going to come around the sides. And if this is going to be my point of connection right here, I'm drawing it see-through. Right there is where the next part of the leg is going to emerge from, okay? That was where the knee will sit. And the next part of the leg emerges from right in between those two things. Okay. That'll be it for today.